Hi friends, hope you are all doing fine. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. Today I'll discuss a new programming language or I should say a relatively new programming language which has come up over the last several years. And this is a language which is specifically suitable for data science and machine learning and we'll go into some issues about whether this language is worth learning. Because to learn a language you do need to devote a lot of time to this language. So I'll just go through some aspects about how languages came up and my own background with them. So actually in the 1990s, Fortran was very popular for scientific computing. And then C came especially among the computer science fraternity and the book by Carnegie and Ritchie was there and that became extremely influential in C. And I remember doing numerical computing classes and then we had to submit the assignments in C and at that time pointers were all the rage. And so the thing among us was how we can use the pointers to write very optimized code and so on. So putting these uh, ampersand in front of notations and so on, that was a whole issue in C. And of course it was very good for nerds, but it was very difficult in terms of actually understanding the code in many times. Now beyond that, uh, the OOP thing came up and C++ came up and Java and many other languages. And these were more into the computer science aspects rather than the scientific computing aspects. So as far as scientific computing is concerned, Fortran, C, and then MATLAB became very popular. So these were the languages where primarily people used to write their code in. Now, when I was a student, we wrote all our code in Fortran. So if we were doing any numerical analysis problems, such as finding the frequencies of a structure, we would develop the stiffness and mass matrices in Fortran. We would do all the different calculation and then we would call some subroutines and essentially those subroutines were the equivalent of functions in today's languages. So Fortran and C are still very efficient languages as far as numerical programming is concerned. But I will still tell you where the problem started with these languages. And I realized that the moment I left the university and joined a company and um, suddenly I did not have access to compilers in Fortran. And essentially I got a uh, review back from a paper which I had submitted in my PhD and this reviewer told me to make some changes to my code and rerun several cases. Now I could not find any compiler in Fortran and so what I had to do, I had to get Linux on my Windows computer, I had to partition it, I had to do all kind of things and then somehow get the Fortran compiler in Linux to compile the code and it was extremely slow because in those days computers were very slow. This was in the 1990s. So that was a huge problem. And later I realized today with Python and Julia and some of these languages, the fact that you can directly work with them on the web, you can download these free of cost. That is a huge edge as far as people are concerned because you do not need this compiler anymore. Now, of course, I should tell you that if you need compilers, Linux is the best option because you have the GCC and some of these compilers out there. You have G4Tran also. So even today you can get Fortran compilers, C compilers and all free of cost if you have a Linux system. So now re returning back to our debate of Python versus Julia. I would say that Python is very convenient and simple. Now most of you who are familiar with Python would know it that it's very easy to start off Python even a child can learn Python. But as time goes by, Python becomes somewhat more complicated. So it depends on the level of performance and functionality you need from Python. Now C was always fast and speedy. So that was the point about C. But again, one of the things which happens is that when you write code in C, it is harder to write, it's harder to manage, it is harder to understand. So that's something to keep in mind. Now. This is one of the reasons why many people have shifted to Python in recent years. Now, if you look at one more language which is prevalent in data science and that is R, but R is even slower than Python. So it is an extremely slow language. So again, most of these are okay for many small problems which uh, people do in some courses in data science or scientific computing. But if you are doing really large scale problems, computer intensive problem, then this computer time problem starts becoming 
a big issue. So this is why the language Julia has come up and Julia is somewhat like a combination of C and Python but without some of the problems in C. That's what they tried to do when they created Julia. So again Julia is a dynamic language. You can get it free of cost and you can use it. It is somewhat Pythonic but not totally so. It does give you some of the power of the compiled languages like C and Fortran. So that's one of the good points about uh, Julia. Julia can also be used to call many of the Python libraries and it's uh, backward compatible with many languages. And also for parallel computation and some of these features, Julia is also quite useful. Now, should you take the time and effort to invest in Julia? So the question is that if you already know Python, probably you are going fine with Python and so you may just take some time to learn about Julia and so on. But I think if you are not into Python, if you are a new student, if you are very young at this point, then maybe you can take up Julia because Julia may be the future as far as machine learning is concerned. Of course, there are a lot of vested interest here. These things are not totally decided on a technical basis or a scientific basis. What happens is there is a kind of network phenomena which happens here. If a very large number of people start using Python, which is the case, then a lot of the infrastructure, a lot of the companies, a lot of the libraries which come up are specifically tailored toward Python. So I would certainly acknowledge that Python has a very large community in contrast to Julia, where the community is very small and mostly university type of people or researchers. But if you are in a university setting, maybe you are doing research, maybe you are doing a master's thesis project or a PhD thesis work, then you need a language. I would say you can try out Julia. That would certainly put you in the front of the field. You can always say that whatever problem you have done, you have done it in Julia. So that's going to look good on you. And uh, certainly it may not be as marketable as Python. So do keep that in mind, whether you want to keep Julia as your second language or not. But of course, for many people who are totally in the university system, Julia is a good language to get into because like I mentioned, MATLAB is always there, but MATLAB is also relatively slower. And if any of you have been doing larger scale scientific computing, you would realize that MATLAB is good for many of the toy problems which are given out in universities as a uh, homework assignments or projects and so on. But as soon as you start doing any larger problem in engineering or science, so your PhD may demand some solution of some pretty large level scientific computing problem, say in computational fluid dynamics or uh, uh, atmospheric modeling or something like that. And uh, then you will find that a language like Julia would be very useful for you. So finally, I would tell you the web page where you can find more details about Julia. That is julialang.org, J-U-L-I-A-L-A-N-G.org. And finally, as a bonus point, I would leave you with this one thing that if your mom was to ask you, what are you doing? And your reply was that I am going to work with Python then that's not going to come out very well. But if you were to say, I'm going to work with Julia, then she may still see hope in you. So that's all for today and I will see you in a video sometime soon.